mentioned this obviously really important in international competitions and tournaments. So how important is it to go tomorrow and put in a performance that lays down a marker and gives that momentum going into the world? Yeah, very important. Um, and that's been the chat all week. You know, it's never been. Uh, this has never been a, a warm-up game as such for us. Um, it's been very much uh, a test match, um, and that's the way we've prepared for this game all week. Um, that's that's where the focus has been. Um, so it's important um, that we get the the right performance that we're looking for tomorrow, and we take a step forward from the Italy game. Um, see a lot of guys first first appearance now of the summer. Um, so um, it's going to be tough, but um, you know, we're not going to make any excuses. We need to make sure that we uh, we take a step forward for the group um, and we put in a performance tomorrow that will give us confidence heading to Biarritz next week uh, with the competition, you know, with the World Cup coming, coming around the corner quickly. Uh, we played here uh, twice again, obviously, great win, great result, but performances are perfect for every aren't we, that day. Um, what did you take from that game in terms of areas you need to improve on? Yeah, we were just off, um, so you know, obviously we must have been distracted a little bit by something um, because um, we were just uh, we were a little bit off. Um, I just thought our attack, uh, you know, wasn't wasn't where it needed to be. It wasn't as cohesive, as kind of fluid as it usually is. Um, and um, in fairness, they put us under a lot of pressure. Um, Defensively, um, you know they like to get off the line quickly and be aggressive in their defence. So, um, you know maybe we got um, a little bit spooked by that at times, and, and we didn't, we weren't as calm maybe and and, and then accurate then off the back of it uh, as we needed to be. So, um, yeah, there was a few lessons in that game, and we'll need to be better tomorrow because um, you know we need to have a couple of games now under their belt, and um, they'll definitely be looking at this fixture as, as one, which is. Um, no, as big as it is for us as it is for them. So, thanks. So, I just want to ask that, um, you were in Portugal last week, and some of the Paris families were out there, and it was Roy Keane and the United States, and that kind of place, it seemed like an enjoyable camp. Uh, how good are this management team at making it an enjoyable place to be? It's going to be a long two months for France. Uh, how important is it that you get on and you enjoy your time again? Really important, yeah. Um, it's very family oriented in here. Um, like, so there was plenty of families and partners and kids over in Portugal, and uh, we got to spend an evening with them on Thursday evening last week. Um, and and you know, Faz would push that a lot um, in terms of getting our families as, as involved as we can. Um, so Portugal was good. It was. It wasn't all just. Um, you know, there was it was a serious block of work we did as well. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, you know, probably the toughest sessions we've had um, over the course of the summer. Um, so definitely, there was a huge block of work done physically as well last week. So I think, um, you know, particularly in the heat, obviously it, it made it even um, more challenging for us, which is great. So uh, lads kind of bounced into this week in Bajistan, um, you know, feeling feeling a lot better for it. Thanks, Ashley. Hi, James. Ashley from Off the Ball. How would you describe the atmosphere at the minute within the camp? Um, good, yeah. Uh, I think there's a bit of nerves heading into this game. As I said, it's the first game for a lot of us um, over the summer and playing England at home. There's always a little bit of pressure, and um, lads are you know, keen to, to, to make a statement um, with selection and everything coming up. But, um, yeah, the atmosphere has been has been really good all summer. It's been enjoyable, and I think, um, you know, as as the World Cup is coming up very soon now, people are you know starting to get very excited. Does Andy strike that balance well? There's obviously players that are so fortunate to, you know, make the squad and make the team. Does he strike that balance well? But there's still a good atmosphere, even though there's a lot on the line. Yeah, he does. Um, definitely. Um, you know, as we were saying last week, we. We worked hard, but we had time to relax as, uh, relax as well. Um, so um, yeah, he, he, he gets the, the balance right. And it's one of his, you know, his pretty strengths as a, as a coach. Um, he's able to you know, create that environment where people are are really switched on. But you know, um, we also get windows where we can relax and, and kind of uh, chill out for a bit as well. So. Um, 
that's going to be huge coming into France now. Obviously, spending a lot of time together, a lot more than hopefully than we we would even on a summer tour. Um, so making sure you know lads aren't um, you know burning out by by being too on all the time is going to be important. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, just one more thought, okay? Uh, Pete Girls is making some hunger cap. He made his debut back in two thousand and eight. He made his debut in twenty seventeen. What was it like going from watching him play with Ireland to then being his teammate? Yeah, um, it's surreal probably at the start, like it, like it was for for a lot of the lads, for, for, or like it was with a lot of the lads for me. Um, but uh, it is an incredible achievement. Like he's only the ninth Irish player to, to reach that milestone, and out of you know well over a thousand uh, players that have been capped for Ireland, so it is a very unique achievement. Um, and you know, I think he personifies everything that's great about being an Irish rugby player. Um, he's tough, he's smart, um, he, you know, he's such a hard worker, uh, and he's a hugely popular member of the squad. You know, from from everyone that's played with him, uh, whether it's the older lads or the younger lads coming in, um, the lads that don't play anymore. Um, you know, you only ever hear good things being said about him. So, um, it's pray for him that he gets to you know make his hundredth cap hopefully tomorrow uh, at home at Dublin. Uh, Shane, and then Nick. Shane, 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 like his work in the kind of contact is probably a strength of his. Like he's, you know, every time he carries the ball, he seems to uh, to punch hard, um, and he's he's kind of that sort of tenacious player um, that you enjoy playing with. So um, he fully fully deserves the opportunity. I think so. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with him tomorrow. In terms of performance tomorrow, Andy Farrell described Martin as if he was bulky, different personality, had a hit out against Portugal in the meantime as well. How do you hope he reflects on tomorrow's performance? Uh, well, I was just saying, I think hopefully he reflects uh, on it uh, and sees it as a step forward um, for us. So um, that's very much the focus heading into the game. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a big one. Um, you know, obviously, different parts of the game that will be important. Set piece is going to be really important against England uh, territory. Um, obviously, they have a very good kicking game. Um, and you know the game line in terms of some of the ball carriers they have. Um, so uh, you know maybe a, a different sort of challenge, a different kind of game um, than Italy. Um, so it's uh, you know we're, we're definitely gonna need to bring our, our our game a game tomorrow. There's been a lot of talk obviously around on Farrell and the attacking and everything else as well. But just as a player, how frustrating is it that it seems that officials and Everything else that goes with, they're not saying not the same hit Is that frustrating for you? Not really, no. Um, you know, I'm not going to get dragged into judicial matters, to be honest. Um, I let World Rugby deal with that, and, and um, you know, whatever happens, happens, you know. Okay, final questions for Nick, please. Uh, thanks, Peter. Congratulations on the uh, captaincy again, James. Uh, the time before a World Cup gives you as a squad. Um, we're always just trying to get better. Um, like you know, our last performance out against England, we weren't where we needed to be. So um, the bits we're looking at is, is can we improve on that performance when we played against a team that put us under a lot of pressure uh, defensively around the rock. Um, and as I said, we probably didn't handle it as well as we should have. Um, so um, tomorrow we're we're going to see if we can be um, better under that pressure, a bit calmer, uh, and if we're able to execute as well. More accurately than off the back of it, um, but uh, I mean, obviously, we, we love playing with the ball, we love attacking. Um, so that's that'll be an area we're looking at tomorrow. Um, and then obviously the rook, you know, is, a, is another important area for us. It's kind of the heartbeat of our game, uh, certainly our attack. Um, and Italy um, definitely got some access there um, back here a couple of weeks ago. So 
um, how good we can be in that area is also a big, a big, uh, big one for us tomorrow. And is, is uh, the rock in particular? Is that about numbers, body positions as you go in, ball presentation? What are the things that you're thinking about? Well, how early, how early we can be. So um, just that urgency to get there early, um, and then obviously about numbers. You're you're, you're always going to need at least two. Uh, the rock, if not three, uh, especially against a team like England, they put a huge amount of pressure uh, at the rock. So um, you know our urgency and and, and uh, the numbers we have at the rock, and then obviously uh, our intent as well is huge.